then um then I'll put this up in our in our page in our group. So for how long have you been conducting trainings? I'm old, Paul. I'm 50. <laughs> then I've been conducting trainings for a while, really. <laughs> uh, probably more than 20 years now. Wow. Wow. Do you remember when you started? Uh, yeah, remember? I think I'll start. Yeah. When did I think start? I I I started uh, when I work in La Nación newspaper. I used to cover uh, corruption issues, uh, justice, uh, wow. and not necessary fact checking. Uh, and at that time, in general, I conduct trainings for attorneys and judges, explaining wow. them what journalists need data quicker than what in general they are used to. Wow, that's uh, that's awesome. And I think we already have over 100 people with us right now. And um, so for those uh, that are uh, just uh, joining us, I would like to welcome you. Uh, my name is Paul Adipoju, and uh, I'm the community manager for the International Center for Journalists of Pamela Howard Forum on Global Crisis Reporting. And I'm happy to really, really welcome you to this year's edition, to the official commencement of this year's edition of the High CFJ's uh, Empowering the Truth uh, Global Summit. And uh, throughout the month of March, every Thursday, uh, journalists in every corner of the world will come together once per week in March to learn tools and strategies uh, for elevating truthful information above the tide of misinformation. And this is part of the ICFJ's uh, second annual Empowering the Truth Summit. Uh, the summit offers a series of online training sessions in seven languages led by experts with regional knowledge and journalists, fact checkers, and students are expected to learn skills to help them amplify the reach of reliable uh, facts and use innovative means to produce uh, factual content. So I'm really, really happy for everybody that's joining us today. And um, and like we said, um, in addition to these webinars, in addition to these webinars, uh, journalists, sorry, tech issue there. <laughs> <laughs> in addition to these uh, webinars, uh, journalists would also have uh, opportunity to be eligible, participants, sorry, would be eligible for uh, funding to pursue groundbreaking ways to better distribute facts online, including through collaborations, subject matter, experts, or by leveraging new technologies. So I encourage you uh, to be part of this amazing uh, series of training that we expect to have a really, really far-reaching impact on the way we distribute truth. So I want you to engage us through the chat box if you are with us live on, live on the Zoom platform. Tell us where you are, tell us your name, and tell us where you are joining us from, and we will be happy uh, to welcome you. Thank you, thank you to everybody joining us uh, in diff from different parts of the world. I welcome Halni from Pakistan. I also welcome, uh, uh, we have attendees from uh, Bangladesh. We have people joining us from Sierra Leone, uh, from South Sudan. Uh, we also have people joining us uh, from India. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody. I don't, we also have people, uh, Jennifer, thanks for joining us from Los Angeles. Isabel, thank you for joining us from Malawi. Uh, we are being joined by Flavia from Brazil and uh, lots more people. So before we go to the session today, I have a please, please don't stop engaging. I want the full chat box to be filled with messages from you. So before uh, we like to know you a bit and I encourage everybody to help us fill this form that you are looking at right in front of you right now. We'd like to know you. Please tell us where you are. 
uh, tell us uh, which country or region you are joining us from. Tell us the name of your organization. Uh, we also like to know your job title and uh, last information. We would like to know the demography of the people in attendance today. Please, please, please. This is our way of getting to know you more. Please don't leave any question unfinished. We have 7% of attendees that have now filled um, the form. Please and please, um, we welcome you to actually engage with us. Please uh, don't, uh, yes, we're at 14% right now, 15%. I want us to get as high as possible. 20%, thank you very much. If you're just joining us, the question on your screen right now, uh, the survey, the quiz on your screen right now, please fill it up. Uh, 25% of attendees have filled it. We are heading to 30%. I'm not, I'm not stopping. Uh, thank you, we've reached, we've exceeded 30%. Let's take it to 40% of attendees, please. Our, our trainer today is already with us, but we really, really want to get to know you. We really want to know where you are joining us from and get some insights about you so that we can localize it as much as we can uh, for this purpose. So please, we are 42%. And um, which means more than half of the attendees are yet to fill this survey. Please, please uh, fill this. Um, it's very quick. It's very brief. You can finish it in 30 seconds. And I really, really, really want to get to know you. Thank you. We are approaching 50%. Uh, please, I would like you to start this session as soon as possible, which is why I would appreciate your cooperation. Uh, we are approaching 50% right now. So thank you very much. Half of attendees have filled it. So please, if you've not filled it, please and please and please, I really want to hear from you. We really want to uh, know, get to know you very much. Last year was the first edition, was the inaugural summit in, 2000, in 2023. And uh, we had more than 1,800 attendees for this summit spread for attending from 129 countries, which provided evidence of the appetite worldwide for this kind of training. This year's summit uh, will cover building networks and alliances, which is what we are focusing on today. Our trainer is already here. I will introduce her in a minute. And reaching difficult to reach or marginalized audiences and um, strengthening uh, strengthening audience trust and leveraging uh, artificial intelligence. Okay. It has um the summit has also expanded from offering training is in last year we did our sessions in just five languages. But I'm excited to tell you that this year this summit is being produced and it's been delivered in seven languages. We languages which are Arabic, Bahasa, Indonesia. English, French, Portuguese, Russian, and Spanish. And um, it's going to be an amazing couple of weeks. We are putting 70%. Please, please, please. If you've not filled the survey in front of you right now, I really want you to fill it. Uh, I promise to stop. I promise to get this moving once we reach 70%. So we are currently at 66%. Uh, we still need a few uh, persons uh, to actually fill our survey and we get this going. And um, please, please, uh, it's stuck at 66%. I need some people that have not filled it to actually take this step and uh, just help us fill it. Please and please and please, I'm imploring you. This information is really, really important for us to be able to better deliver top quality um, webinar training sessions and for our uh, trainers to actually interact and have a much clearer understanding of the audience. We've exceeded over 200 people right now. If you've not filled the questions, if you've not filled the survey on your screen, I place, this is Paul begging right now. <laughs> I know, I know these things uh, uh, could actually be difficult. You could feel like uh, it's a lot to ask for, but we know we are, we know you can do this. I know you can help us with this. Uh, these are the insights that we get that we use to be able to really, really provide um content that best serve the purpose. So we, I will minimize it and uh, encourage you to continue to feel this so that we get uh, to know you uh, much more and we are able to deliver uh, a really, really robust uh, session. So today we have our trainer ready. Laura, I'm ready for you. <laughs> How are you doing, Laura? How are you doing today? Thank you for accepting our invitation. No, thank you for having me.
<laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, for those that do not know Laura, I think uh, Laura is uh, somebody that we are very, very happy to have uh, joining us uh, today. Uh, you are quite familiar with the uh, ICFJ's uh, ecosystem. And um, beyond that, uh, she's also an ICFJ uh, Knight Fellow, and uh, she's the co-founder and CEO of, help me with this, Laura, Fact Check Factor. It's, it's, it's Fact Chequeado. Fact is like fact in English, and Chequeado is checked in Spanish. Then it's a Spanglish word. Okay, uh, Fact Check, is that the meaning? Yeah, that's the meaning. It And it's a mix of English and Spanish, because the initiative is an initiative launched in the U.S. to find this information in Spanish, targeting Latin your communities and Hispanic uh, population. Thank you very much. Before we go into your session, the question that came to my mind was, um, why did you decide that this is the uh, fact checking is something that is worth committing your time and resources and uh, passion to? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, we we start before launching Fat Chequeado in the U.S. During more than a decade, I was the executive director of Chequeado. That was the first fat check initiative in the Global South. Uh, we are based in Argentina, but working all around Latin America with more than 40 partners. Um, and when we launched in 2010, the country were with a really transparent and open discussion between the government and the main media actors from the country, the private media companies. And, and citizens was just, or people was just in the middle of a fight that uh, didn't give, give them necessarily the best information. Uh, the, that fight didn't was necessary um, something that take care of them in terms of right to information or or the right to know. And then when we when we started with with Chequeado, part of, of our goal was, okay, you can think whatever you want. You can like the government, you can like the opposition, you can li like right or left. but any conversation, any de uh, deliberation need to have some common common space to have that disagreement. And, and the problem with polarization is the, the debate start just to disappear because people that are in, in the polos are just having their own monologues without necessarily listening to the others. And I'm sure in this, <laughs> super diverse um, participants coming from all over the world or lots of continents. This story probably sounds similar to some of your countries or your political situation or public debate situation. Then the reason why we start, it was just to contribute with data and high quality journalists to increase or to improve the quality of public debate. Thank you for that. Um, and I think uh, without wasting time, I think it's, the, it's time to start today's session. And um, I would like you to have the floor, uh, go with the flow, and uh, hopefully uh, the audience uh, would have lots of questions for you. So are you ready? Can you start sharing your screen? Yes. Okay. I, I will start. You can tell me if everything's working. Yes, everything is working. Okay, then. Uh, then today uh, we are going to talk about alliance and networks. And, and probably if I do my work well, um, you will listen some ideas that are not necessarily super new for you, but they are um, simple ideas that you can implement Tomorrow, the uh, my presentation is based on on my own experience, but also experience from different colleagues from from different parts in general, from the global south, but also from from central countries, 
and it's based on some tips, some recommendations, some failures on how to create or build uh, a network that can be good and not just good for the person that started, but for the participants. Um, as Paul said, I, I'm i super open to listen to your questions and if you have comments or critics, then I will be trying to follow uh, the chat and your questions. Um, and if I'm losing, um, then I'm gonna ask you for some minutes to take a look on that. Uh, this is who am I, but already Paul present myself. Uh, you have there's some of my background, but basically I'm coming from Argentina, now working in the US with some experience with different organizations in Latin America, both in Brazil, in, in, in Colombia, and other organizations that are regional. And I'm now part of that, some boards. And then the first question for you all is, okay, alliance and networks and with what purpose and the reason is to increase our impact and and i think this is um the main idea that i want you to take to your house is we need partners and we need networks and we need more collaboration in journalists because sources are never enough for the impact that we want to have. And then that's a kind of, it's not just a philosophical uh, or a mindset that I invite you to think, but also a pragmatical reason to think about alliances and networks in your own work. Um, we need our content, as I mentioned, to go further, to reach more people, ideally faster and in an appropriate format. And when I'm saying an appropriate format, you all know that appropriate format for an, I don't know, an old um, uh, person is not necessarily the same format for a younger one uh, or for someone living in, in Nigeria or Chile or uh, France. And then um, I, I want you to think about if we want to reach people, we need from the beginning, not just to think about what journalists love, that in general is to, to develop, to work, to investigate and to write down or to report a good story, but also to think from the beginning on how that story will reach the people that need your story the most. Um, and then why alliance? Uh, and, and this is a kind of call to action to journalists all around the world to be more, more modest. Um, in general, Ego is around journalists, and, and you probably said, it's not my case. Per perhaps it's not, but, but one of the reasons um, that I want to emphasize this is that in some cases, collaboration and alliances and networks are not working um, due to just ego from different people. And then, the the thing that is important for me to to share with you is that you you should think based on your actual project um what are the the tasks or the fields where you don't feel as good and then think about what are the better people doing in that that you need for your project and then that's at least based on my experience the better way to start thinking to build a network or a partnership is okay if i'm not good enough in this or i'm not the best doing i don't know video or doing investigative reporting or doing editions or or 
uh, of or whatever, look for someone that is the master person doing that. And and that that can be someone not necessarily living in your country in some cases, or someone that you don't know, but if you email that person, that person can be open to collaborate. And then try to think your alliance in terms of what do I need to improve my actual initiative or, pro or project? And then you should think about what kind of things can you do with others that you mean you may not necessarily be able to do or perhaps you are able but due to different reasons in the past you were not doing you have done you have you never done before and then also think about and and Think about how you design or build a network. Include these ideas, or perhaps you ha you have a a list of things that you consider they are crucial, they are important for your project, but you are just running on the day by day work, and you just put in aside that type of things. Then thinking about a network that can contribute to do that important things that you are not doing today is part of um, at least what I recommend you to do. And then the most promising alliances, um, although not always are the easiest, um, are with actors that are not necessary as you are. The, the most promising alliance are with actors that are complementary to you, to your skills, to your mindset, to your biases, that they are actors that are diverse enough because one of the challenges that all the journalists around the world are facing today is that audiences are with a hyper-segmentation that don't allow us necessarily with the same content to reach them. And then having the chance to have a network that allowed you in some cases to listen to diverse groups, in other cases to offer them different formats to that diverse groups, uh, in other cases to have their questions or whatever you can think, is important for sure for the impact of your project. Uh, I will stop here before going um, uh, going forward to listen from you. And I, I will suggest you to write down in the question and, and answers. Um, if you have any example of a network or an alliance that you did in the past that have this idea of complementation and diversity that I'm mentioning. If any of you have any example, please share it in the boxes of questions and answers. Can you mention the question? Can you say the question again, Laura? Yeah, do you have any experience with a alliance or network that you will be involved that have this characteristic of diverse and complementary in the partners? Just asking, not all were journalists or not all were from the same country or not all were talking the same language or not all were working on the same topic. Do you have any example that you want to share? Okay. If not, don't, have, don't worry. We have one from Philippa. Philippa says, um, journalist for human rights in Canada. Yeah. And then, Philippa, do you want to write more about that? And also Flavia from Lupa, 
Yes. Mentioned that she joined Latam Chequea and Lupa is from Brazil. And most of the partners from Latam Chequea speak Spanish. Um, the Nepal Investigative Multimedia Journalist Network in Nepal. Uh, they probably have journalists with different skills, not all writing people, but also videos or audio experts. Uh, also, we have another colleague from LATAM mentioning, Brenda mentioning Red LATAM, uh, that is a network led by Factual and Distintas Latitudes that work with young journalists. Uh, also, someone mentioned Africa Resilience Network, Kennedy. Okay, thank you all for sharing that. Um, it's super useful. Um, at least for myself to take a look on your projects to have better examples for the next time. And then the, the other thing that I think is important is that in all the networks, it is crucial to be clear about the rules about the deadlines, about the responsibilities. And, and as would happen when we get married, for example, um, in general, we think that things will work well always. And when we set the rules, we should define in advance when we are all the partners happy, who will decide if we are in different pages. If there are someone that don't agree with us, who will be the person or the organization that will take the decision if there are a disagreement inside that network? And this perhaps sounds as, this is obvious. And I can tell you, no, it's not as obvious. It's not so obvious that I, I've been during lots of years seeing networks that don't have necessary transparent transparency enough with their participants about what we can expect from that network on what the network will provide me or what I'm gonna give the network. And then I'm I'm just trying to to close the box. Wait. Because if not, I can't see my presentation. Yeah, and then, um, then what I recommend you from the day one of your strategy to build a network is to think about uh, some definitions in advance. And I'm not saying you can't change that definitions or that rules. If you agree with the participants in doing it in the middle while or after a while, uh, if the network is not necessarily working in the way you expect, you can for sure change some workflows or change some of the um, responsibilities assigned. But what is important is that all the participants know who is doing what having the chance to ask why that person or that organization is doing this and that, and how you can, in all the cases, complement one with the other one. And the focus is always, at least from my perspective, on how we can increase our impact. And the other thing that, in general, journalists are are perfectionists and we are looking always to not necessarily make mistakes and be perfect from day one. And what happened with networks is obviously networks in, in, include human beings and we are human beings and, and we can have a, a long list of tasks and duties and, and in inside the network, in the alliance, they are always uh, not just the, the task, but also these soft 
skills that matters. Uh, Paul studies uh, uh, this webinar encourage you to participate with some kind of humor, and that's matter. And and some in, in lots of cases, the I I saw journalists that were just focused on the product in a way that is not necessarily good to build a network that can be a long journey network. Uh, when I'm talking about how to build alliance and networks, I'm not necessarily talking about uh, networks that are or collaborations that are just for one article or for one piece. In general, all these recommendations or, or tips are trying to help you think about networks that can have some ormances, oh yes, uh, working and helping you with your project. And then you need to know that alliance are not perfect from the beginning. And then we should continue if the result or the goal is clear, then we just continue pushing on how we can improve that network. And, and improve the network can include um, being more flexible in some things or being more strict in others or uh, allow differences between the partners in some cases or not include the exceptions because some partners can feel bad. And then what I'm sure that all the alliance and networks that I've been studying or doing needs is a lot of communication and transparency. Um, and then what I'm talking about is we need to be clear about our goals and we need to be enough flexible on, on the house, on, on how we design or redesign once, twice, or more than twice, or more than three times, or more than five times if we were doing a network for, I don't know, 10 years, to rethink and redesign the workflows that works for all the partners. My experience showed me that if a network is not working for someone, that partner probably perhaps will participate or we will, will contribute at the beginning, but after a while, that collaboration will be just decreasing. And the only way to continue with the network that put the best from each of the participants is to listen to the recommendations, the concerns, the suggestions from the participants. And I'm not saying you would always have the chance to accept all the recommendations or all the comments from all the participants. I'm not saying that because in some cases it's almost impossible to have all the participants 100% happy with all the workflows that you are designing. But you should be not just at the beginning but also during having, I don't know, a three months or every six months a check-in to be sure that the design of the network, the workflow and the, the, the way of communicate, the, the type of, of, of um, responsibilities that different actors have, et cetera, are the better ones for that time for that network, but also for the partners that are taking part in that network. And then is in the same way that I mentioned this idea to invite all the journalists to reflect about being modest in terms of probably there are someone outside that can do some of your work better than you. Invite or showing that people or that colleague or that, I don't know, actor, painter, singer, influencer, to contribute to their work if they are doing something that can be useful for you and you are not necessarily having the chances to do it as well. In the same way that I mentioned this idea to be more, more modest, I invite you to be all the time listening what your network needs from you. 
if you are the one leading the network. Uh, and then I think I already mentioned some of this in a way when, when I said collaboration means giving. If you, if you don't want to give anything, if you just want to continue with your, your idea in the same way that you thought about, you thought about it, collaboration is tough for you. Probably you will have a problem uh, leading a network or creating a network. But if you are going to make or to design a network, you should take into account that you probably gonna be given something and that giving can be investing more time in something that if you are doing it alone, it can be quicker or uh, in some cases invest uh, more sources in advance to have more sources in the future because at the beginning, probably you, you should train or to set rules or be all of you in the same page, and that's gonna take time in a way, and then you should be, uh, you should have the knowledge from the beginning that build a network that can work well, needs that you are open to not do the things in the way you think the other way to do them. Because you probably, don't have the better answers for everything, and then you need to be open to um, to give some of that. Um, then I want um, to take a look on your questions before go deeply to some examples that I think they are. Uh, probably useful for you uh, can can inspire you in a, in different ways and then i'm gonna take a look in the in the questions and and come back to you in a moment okay i probably can help you scan through and um, okay yeah. And um, I want to give the floor if you want to ask your question live regarding a question that ah, you have. Okay. I, I didn't know this, if I can ask that. Then this, good that you this did This conversation, it. please raise your hand. If you don't have a question and your hand is raised, please lower your hand. So if you, if you have your hand raised and you have a question, uh, Sonny Musa, let me give the floor to Sonny Musa and see. Sonny Musa, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Afal. Um, Thank you. It is very excited, actually. We are very happy with these uh, lectures that has just been delivered. My question is, how long this uh, collaboration you're going to check and are you going to consider young journalists coming up in Nigeria like my colleagues I have a lot of my colleagues in the newsroom are you going to consider them as part of the collaboration thank you so I think um, probably the way I will rephrase uh, Sunny's question is regarding geographical distribution of collaborations what do you think which what should be considered when selecting where to choose people to collaborate from so that is how i will rephrase the question what do you think yeah probably uh, sunny uh, what is important to to all the networks that you are are trying to build is depending on your goal that's that what you need to to think about your partners. If your goal is to inform all your, your country, a, a better a good strategy probably be try to have at least one partner from each city or each town. But if you are focused uh, in 
in a problem that is mainly from a problem of the north or of the south of your country, then it's not necessary. Um, ne it's not necessarily not useful, not smart to have partners from areas that are not necessarily your goal in terms of information delivery. Um, then what what you always need to think when you are designing the network is to think about your goal and and have your impact, the idea of impact in the center of the decisions that you are making related to the network. It's not just in at, at least the networks that can be successful uh, or journalistic, uh, talking about journalist impact. They are not just networks that um, say, okay, I like you, let's start doing a project together. That's in some cases can work, but in general, what is important is to think about what your project needs and look for create and be the networks that allow the partners that have the skills that you need in your project to work to be on board to be compromised to etc and then uh, um, it depends it depends on your goal your geographic uh, or where you gonna look for your partners okay we still have more can we take cuts cut yeah we, we can take cuts and then we continue with examples if you're okay yes okay. cut over to you good morning thank you lara um i'm just wondering can you talk a bit about conflict resolution in collaboration are there any key skills or key um approaches that you think are very effective among journalists yeah uh... It's it's a super good question. Uh, in the same way that I mentioned that, it, at least based on my experience, journalists don't necessarily pay enough attention to what I, in general terms, call soft skills. Uh, I think the same happened with with how we can solve as soon as possible conflicts that can. Uh, in some cases, grow and and just make the network to or or lose some of the partners or directly uh, make the network stop working because people start uh, talking against that network and then um, define in advance this idea of okay if there are disagreement these are the ones that are going to take the decision include uh, at least the chance to give that organization or that person the chance to define the better methodology for the problem that you are addressing. And the problem, as you know, and, and I don't want just to do generalizations, but we are talking about networks that can be completely different in terms of um, you can have a network of women journalists working against, I don't know, um, violence, and and perhaps some of the challenges are different from other people that are changing, are challenging, uh, violence from governments or censorships in their countries. And then, my only recommendation in this card is define who gonna be the person with enough legitimacy and enough procedures and chances, not just legitimacy, but also the power, the real power to take decisions with a conflict appear. And, and do that from day one. Because if, if you never have a conflict, that's fine. But in generally, in life, and in networks, we have conflicts with different level of, 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 of challenges, but we always have we always have um, some, some kind of problems. The networks that are successful are the ones that have the chance to solve that problems before that problems are huge. 
And then recommendations is set the one that's going to be deciding and re react as soon as you know about the conflict. Don't desestimate never when someone is telling you, I have a problem with this. And then again, listen. Part of the of the most important skill that you need to have if you're gonna run a network is you need to have someone or yourself or someone else to be listening all the time how, how things going. Thank you. Let's keep moving. We'll come back to the questions uh, probably uh, later on. Don't worry. Uh, I'll make, I'll endeavor to get Laura to answer as much questions as you as she can. So keep put, putting the questions in the Q and A, uh, and we'll be back to the questions. Uh, let's yeah. continue. Uh, thank you. Then, then I will bring you some uh, alliance between fact checkers and media, as as Paul mentioned. These these. Webinar is part of the Empowering the Truth from a program that is disarming disinformation that is basically focused on uh, fight disinformation and know more about who finance this information around the world and trying to find uh, innovative ways, ways to reach more people with uh, reliable information and with fact checks or explainers, etc. And then Alliance between fact checkers and media and some lessons from, from there. Uh, we already mentioned in my introduction and also in the chat, this network that is called LATAM Chequea. The network was the first regional network of fact checkers. We built it in 2014. Um, at the beginning, we were as always happening networks. We were just a few. Now we are... Um, 40 media or non-for-profit working in 19 countries. Um, that network in, uh, or the goal of that network is to share knowledge, to share experience, to support when there's a big challenge in, in a country with a crisis or something like that, uh, to share tools, tools that can be technological tools, research tools, um, et cetera. And um, after Latin Tekea, um, if I'm not wrong, uh, the second regional network that was launched was Africa Facts. And it took long time to Europeans to start their network some years ago. And now they are the biggest network around the world in terms of, of, of participants. Um, and surprisingly, in the US, they are not in the North America, there's not a regional network yet. They are creating or we are creating now the network. And then uh, if I can make an hypothesis about this is that probably the ones that have more needs, um, we are more open to collaborate uh, as part of our, just the way of thinking. And in places where this is not as hard in different ways, um, they're less natural to create networks in the way that we did uh, in some places. And I'm I'm not saying this is a fact. I am I'm saying is is my um believing or my belief on, on this. And I after I finish we can also have some conversation on that. Um, another experience that I bring to you is it's another project that I I started in 2019 that at that time was the, the biggest alliance uh, between media and technological companies. And I know in the questions that there, uh, there one that that include how we can deal with with um, 
good alliance between media, students, and technological companies. And I'm not um, I'm not sure about it. We, it's not easy uh, nowadays to have um, partnerships necessarily with, with big techs that make us feel comfortable in different ways. But in this specific case, this project was a project focused on electoral disinformation. It was a project with us starting and an ending clear in all the cases were just six months, is, uh, six months is before the, not six, six months is before the election, but six months is before the new government um, start, uh, start working or start to to be the new the government um, and uh, this project include more than 120 media working together um, and the project has one side that it was capacity building for newsrooms uh, with fact checking and and disinformation skill or how to track disinformation skills, and on the other side, um, a super important part of that project is that, as you know, some of the disinformation uh, problems are because media share this information, and the reasons why media share this information are are different depending on the country. In some cases, is uh, because they need money. In other cases, is because they are looking for power. In other places, it can be just that they have a super small team with no chances to be sure about what they are publishing, but with a lot of pressure on, on continue publishing a uh, high amount of content, etc. But what this project allowed us is to all the partners of the project have the commit to be transparent if they made a mistake and publish a disinformation. And this simple statement, this simple thing make a huge difference, at least in the electoral uh, periods in Argentina in in the last elections, um, because what happened is that probably a media share uh, a disinformation once, and to continue being part of Reverso, that is the name of the network, they should be transparent with the corrections, saying we published this and this was wrong and this is the correct. A statement or the correct picture or the correct video. And then the cost of continue publishing this information were much higher during the project, during that six months than in the other periods without the project. And then think about what type of incentives you can create in the network to have the impact that you that you are looking for is part of what I'm telling you about thinking in advance and designing in advance what and why are you building that network? Why you are looking for that partners to join you. The, the other project is the one that I already mentioned is um, Fachequeado is the name, is the project that I'm leading now. And, and the reason why I have this night fellowship in the International Center for Journalists. Um, coming from Argentina, that is a country where we speak Spanish, um, we saw some years ago, even before the pandemic, that in lots of cases, there were content that has been created in the US that arrived to different countries in Latin America and also in Spain. And we also saw content that had been created in some country in Latin America and then started to be reposted in accounts in Spanish 
in the U based in the US. And then uh, with the Southland Fachequeado, um, Clara Jimenez Cruz, that she is the co-founder and CEO of Maldita, that's an organization based in Spain, and myself uh, from Chequeado, uh, because there's not good reasons to not think about this information in Spanish with not necessarily paying attention to the borders of the country. Because what we saw for a long time is that um, this information is at the same time a global phenomenon and a hyper-local phenomenon. And then having the chance to have a project that can have on one side the perspective from all the Latin America continent and on the other one there's Spain that is the only country in Europe that speaks Spanish plus the content in the US in, in Spanish make more much more efficient uh, differences the the way in we monitor and detect trends in about in this information in Spanish uh, it's also more efficient to help us not necessarily to repeat or to do more than once the same content when we identify that content in another country or or city. And then what we've been doing with Fachequeado is to, to build an alliance, a network. We already have 70 partners and, uh, and they are media partners or they are grassroots organizations in some cases. And they have the chance to republish for free the content that we create, but also they have the chance to bring us to our newsroom table topics or issues that their communities are asking them and they are not necessarily having the chance to cover or to report on. And as, as well as Tequiado, this project also include training instance because one of the challenges that we identify in the US is that there are not as much people with the chance to report in English, uh, to report in Spanish, or to report in English and produce text and videos in Spanish. And then that's why we are doing this. The other project that at least uh, based on my knowledge, it was the first collaborative project uh, in the fat checking world was a project led by an organization that is no longer um, working in this field that is called First Draft um, that launched in 2017 uh, a project that it was called Cross Check that was a collaboration, if I'm not wrong, between 31 uh, different newsrooms in France and other countries to report on uh, this information during the uh, presidential election in France in 2017. Uh, that project at that time was particularly innovative because um, the first barrier for all this alliance is that we we invite to sit in the same table, but also to share uh, their ideas, their, 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 yeah, their stories uh, with technically competitors. And, and I say technically competitors because really at this time of the story in, in terms of media landscape and journalist challenges, I don't really think that that is something that we make prevent us to do collaboration. We can be um, competitors in terms of, of um, companies, but at the same time have collaborations that can be useful for the different actors. Uh, and as you can see, I don't know if the image is enough clear, but you can see there uh, in the way they present the check, the articles um, uh, cross-check include the logos of the media 
that participate in it in the edition of that, of each piece, and that show the audiences and the public how these competitors were at that time working together uh, to have, in a way, more content or more timely content or better content, etc. Uh, the other project that you, some of you probably know, is another project uh, that at the beginning created first draft that is called Comproba, and it was um, a similar project in terms of design of the of the network uh, that um, have at least forty one Brazilian media outlets. Um, working together and not just during presidential elections, also they work together uh, during the pandemic and and then they continue covering some public policies uh, topics. Um, another network that the is important probably for you to know if you are not familiarized uh, there's still this this network or the content of this this alliance is still online is that one that it was called coronavirus facts that was uh, an alliance created by the international fact check network that was during the pandemic and that allow alliance was was launched in january 2020 where for example in latin america covid uh, wasn't present, um, but we knew the virus um, would would be spread, not just uh, in, at that time they were already in Asia and Europe and in Latin America, for example, arrived in March. At, at least we, we knew, or we discovered the, fair, the first case uh, at the beginning of March. And then this alliance put together um, fact checking organization from 110 plus 110 countries. And, and I think the most uh, amazing uh, contribution of this um, alliance was that include more than 40 languages. And, and this alliance work uh, with a kind kind of uh, share a, a database where all the partners share their content and allow the rest of the partners of the network to reuse that the content uh, without with without the necessary of, of asking permission each of the in each of the cases you just at that time, go to the database, take a look on the content that arrived in your country and was probably already in other country before and reuse that content or readapt it in the format that your audience needed. Uh, another um, good example, uh, at least from my perspective, um, about or in the fact checking um, field was an initiative co called Ukraine Facts that it was led at that time by Bandita, that is this Spanish organization that I mentioned when I I talked about the founders of, of Fat Chequeado. Uh, that basically was a database created the date after the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Uh, and include more than 70 organizations in 75 countries that uh, share their databases or articles related to the world and allow that others to reuse it, that content. Um, in, in these two uh, cases, but also in the case of Reverso and probably in others like Crosscheck or Comproba, um, you also can think about how good this type of uh, networks, when 
when they are networks that include databases that are databases with the same criteria in all the organizations working collaboratively make things much more easy for academics or for scientists to study uh, to study trends to study actors to study etc then it's not just uh, the impact in terms of journalistic impact but in some cases also in terms of uh, academics or knowledge production impact. And then I will open again, Paul, to questions. If someone wants to share just at this time, we were talking about alliances between fact checkers and media or fact checkers and fact checkers. You have other examples that you want to share with the rest of the participants. If that is your case, please share it in the in the questions box. Okay, so we like she said, we are open to additional suggestions regarding alliances. Idrisha already writes some down, saying some alliance between fact checkers and media organizations include in the international fact checking network that we mentioned related to coronavirus fact, ally fact uh, alliance, the pointer Institute that is basically the the institute where the international fact checking network is based, um, the African fact checking network that that include collaboration across Africa to promote fact checking. The Duke Reporters Lab that that is based in Duke University and work on they every year they publish a census uh, that can be interest for some of you if you don't know it um with a map with all the organizations uh, working in the fact checking world and the ones that used to be fact checkers and closed and that is also important and useful in some cases to see that not all the fact checking efforts that born continue their work in lots of cases the reason is financial solutions um, Someone mentioned also here a Google News initiative that support fact checking, um, but I'm not sure I will mention Google News initiative as a alliance, uh, but perhaps I'm wrong. Not it's not, at least from my perspective, it's not necessarily an alliance between fact checkers and media. There's more a funder or, or an company or an organization that can support us with tools or funds. And, and also mention um, Associated Press Fat Check that as you, some of you probably know, some of you came from AFP, have uh, different colleagues working in more than, if I'm not wrong, the last number that I have in my mind or I remember is they have uh, fat checkers in 86 countries, if I'm not wrong, and then they are probably today the biggest effort in terms of fat checking. Um, but in that case, I'm not sure I will mention them as an alliance because they are a, a, an agency that work with journalists around the world, but they are not necessary alliances in the way that we are trying to think in terms of, okay, let's think about another actor that can contribute to your project. In this case, AFP FATCHEC is one project that include effort from different journalists in different contents. And I'm not saying it's not useful. I'm just saying this is not necessarily our focus or this webinar focus. Um, I don't know, Paul, if someone, because I stopped there just in the top, 
and perhaps someone else mentioned another network that can be useful for the participants oh, I, to know. I think it's okay. We'll probably bring everything back home uh, when at the end of of the presentation. So I think we can resume the presentation. Okay. Now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Brenda asked, any alliance in Africa? Yeah, the, there's Africa Pact that put together some some colleagues. Um, and then I continue, then I, I'm going to finish with the presentation in some minutes and then we go to the, yes, to the yes. questions, okay? Uh, yes. The conversation. Then I have two examples and I, I just select two. Uh, there's probably lots of more but these two are particularly interesting for me interesting for me uh, and i will explain you why uh, the first one is one oh sorry uh, sorry then alliances with different actors i select two as i mentioned and one is and some of you perhaps know it uh, an initiative launched in 21, 20, sorry, 2021, um, that um, it was a joint venture between Africa Tech and the UK based Theatre for a Change. Uh, and what they did is to launch a soap operas or radio drama interactive, it was the name of the format. Um, that allow them um, to present on radio a kind of soap op radio soap operas in local languages in Nigeria and Senegal. And the goal of that partnership was to try to reach people that did not know how to read and people without internet connection or access. And uh, the numbers of the impact of these, um, sorry, of these uh, projects was uh, really amazing in terms of the numbers of, of fact checkers and innovative uh, ideas. And the other one, uh, here you have the new project, but this network between Lupa and, and Redes Cordiais basically put together, in, the, in this case, uh, think about uh, the network was a fact-checking fact -checking organization and actors and theater directors and people with thinking about how they can create art and then putting uh, journalists with actors make probably a better storytelling for radio than the ones that the journalists from Africa Tech can write or create uh, themselves. And in the case of Lupa and Redes Cordiais, Redes Cordiais is an organization working with, with influencers uh, to, to train them and to contribute, to give them better tools uh, to deal or to navigate uh, with this information. And then they they just they they will be starting a new project that is called El Informo in Portuguese, that is basically an initiative um, that seeks to come information deserts in Brazil, training very local influencers and representatives of community radio stations. And I mentioned these particular projects because I'm sure all of you are working in or almost all of you are working in countries where you already have the discussions for years in terms of, okay, what influence, uh, journal, uh, influences are not necessarily the better people to provide information or influences are not journalists or whatever. What I, I want you to, 
to think about today is that we can like more or less the style, the characteristics, or the profile of the influences in our countries. But what we can't agree on is in the idea of the importance that some influences has have, sorry, uh, in the public debates in our countries. And then figure it out ways to collaborative work with influencers uh, to provide them, in some cases, our content for them to deliver that evidence-based information in the way that their community wants to receive it. It's uh, at least an important thing to consider, not just thinking about the, the present, but also about the future. All the polls all around the world show us that people receive a lot of information about social networks. A lot of people are not necessarily going uh, to our um, website or to our uh, accounts to get informed. In some cases, they are just, while they are doing something, something else, being uh, in a social network, just chatting with, uh, looking for pictures from a friend or or having fun or etc., where the information appears to them. Uh, and then think about strategies to work with influencers. And I'm not saying this is easy. And I know that the logic of the influencers in lots of our countries, I'm not sure in all, but probably in all of the countries, are much more commercial and not necessarily focused on the public interest in the way journalists are. But what I what I um, the reason why I select this example is think about how can tell the story with your data in a better way that you've been doing at least this time. Um, when when we have discussions being journalists in lots of, lots of cases we are focused on uh, all the details matter uh, i can't do it in 30 seconds etc and and I, I can understand that and i i'm not necessarily asking the journalists or the media to always become influencers or to dance or to present with humor or in a satire way uh, their content. But what I'm I'm recognizing is that people in lots of places choose some influencers to get information or to receive information. Then we should identify that actors and try to create a way to work collaboratively that can be good for both. And there's some experience that are, that are are not necessarily good in terms of, okay, there are some fat checkers that in the past pay to influencers to, to republish their content. And obviously when they stop the, the, the project and they stop uh, paying the influencers, the influencers stop using that content. And th this is not necessarily the model or the, the type of network that I will uh, invite in you to think about. I'm, I'm, I'm just inviting you to think about that actors that can be completely different from one uh, country to the other, but in some cases has um, as the pros, that they they have the chance to engage people and to make people uh, um, follow them and trust on them in lots of cases or believe on them. And we as journalists uh, can't just put aside that because the, the media ecosystem 
um, have the influences as one of the actors uh, and we can like it more or less, but that what it is. And then one of the, the examples that I want to bring to you to the table is, okay, why not thinking about artistic ways to partner or to have alliances? The other one is, why not think about define a group of influencers that you can work on for a long journey and not just once that someone reposts or republish your content. Then we can go, Paul, if you want to questions and, and they have an exercise for, for the participants or, or if you just suggest to me, we can do first the exercise and, and then the questions. You are the one that knows in general <laughs> better than me these participants <laughs> and this network. What do you think? If, Thank if you. we're gonna if we're gonna meet a lot of people, then yeah. probably it's good to do the exercise before the questions. If not, we can go to the questions and then for the exercise. Okay, we have some people that are raising their hand. Let me see if um Monica can quickly say something. Uh, Monica, your hand is raised. What well, would you like to say it quickly? I'm sorry, that was a mistake. Oh, okay, it's fine, Monica. <laughs> ah, okay, don't worry. <laughs> Idris, uh, your hand is raised. What well, would you like to say? Do you have something to say? Yes, um, thank you very much, uh, Laura. I, I enjoyed the, the lecture. <laughs> Uh, yes, quick one with regards to collaboration. Yeah. Let me take particularly to Sierra Leone. We just conducted our election, the 2023 general elections. I was working with um, Sludge I Verify project. Fact checking for Sierra Leone is something new, regardless of the fact Dubara was working around fact checking, but it was not in us in the bigger picture. So, collaboration in our own perspective is something in different interpretation once fact-checking is concerned because um, I'm just bringing the, 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 the understanding in our own perspective. For Sierra Leone, once you collaborate with someone to fact-check a particular story or a particular claim, then that person will be associated as a corroborator to um name and shame someone so um someone who is collaborating he wish to be unanimous so how could one work in a in, in a society like Sierra Leone as here and work in an ethical collaborating platform do you want to take yeah. that yeah, of course, it's it's a it's a good question, and I'm afraid Sierra Leone is not the only country uh, with with that type of challenges. In terms of there are there are many countries that don't have the chances to work openly collaboratively, um, because they have they can have or direct violence or persecution or harassment or whatever, then. Um, if if the question is how you can deal with that, is probably uh, you can do it uh, with transparency between the partners, but not necessarily uh, with transparency with the public. If that is a fear to your uh, safety or integrity or etc. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Gintonga. You have a floor. Uh, can you quickly ask a question? Mohamed Shabir. Uh, hello. Yes. Uh, thank Hi. you for the great webinar. Uh, I have a question about uh, the collaboration between uh, journalists from uh, two or more countries uh, who have the same language. Uh, um, I want to ask about how you uh, try to uh, select the uh, best vocabulary uh, 
uh, especially for uh, countries that are sensitive to these things. For example, between Afghanistan and Iran, who have the yeah. same language, but with a, a little bit different words in these things. I want to learn from your experience okay. in fact, Chicago. Yeah, yeah, it's it's super interesting, Mohammed. And this is a challenge that uh, now we have already or, or almost two years in Fatekiado, but um, we have interesting discussions in terms of edition. In, in Fatekiado, we have three editions from people from different countries. And our standard is based on our audience. And I'm not saying this is necessarily the same solution in all the projects is the the Hispanic living in the US uh, they are they they came from different countries but the main country uh, is Mexico then if they are a word then is if they are a word if they are a word that Can you try again? Yeah. I can do it. Then Okay, if the, yes. It's, uh, it's okay now. Yes. It's okay. Then if the in our case if we if there are word that is different, I don't know in Peru, uh, Mexico, Colombia or Spain, the one that we choose is the one that Mexican use and in some cases in our articles or videos we include also the Spanglish word that can be the one that all the community understand okay. and there's a few times where we include the word and in brackets the different word in different slangs but it's not the usual practice Okay, very good. So let's quickly go to the exercise, then we'll come back with a few other questions. Yeah, uh, okay, perfect. Please. Then um, my invitation as you as you are investing uh, two hours or one hour and a half of your time to, to listen to me is just work on your own strategy, just work on your own project, just use this time to think about what can be useful for your actual initiative, or or I'm not saying all of you are the lead, the leaders of of, a, of an initiative and having the chance to decide if you're gonna be or not a network, but if you have the chance to pitch to the one that takes the decision uh, of the project, let's do the exercise thinking about that. Then I will give you 10 minutes to, to do this. Uh, and and after we finish, I will invite some of you to present to to the rest of the participants um, your um, uh, yeah your your exercise. Then the first um, task is to list five main main allies that you need or you would love to have to boost your main project today. And, and just think out of the box in terms of, you don't have resources, problems, you don't have um, any, any limitation to that list. Just put there five main lands that you would love to have. Don't think about when you prepare the list, if it's that feasible or not. Think big, okay? The second question is, do you know how to reach them? Do you know someone that they know them? Uh, there's a chance to meet them in a, during an event. There are any possibility that someone else introduced them or et cetera. But think about each of the five that you list if you have or not have a connection uh, to at least have the chance 
to pitch them your idea about why they can be a good partner and be a good partner for, for your project can be also something good for them. And the third um, task is just write down the message and it can be an email or an audio. And then you can be more or less formal depending on the uh, organization or person you are thinking as men alive that you would send them to convince them to have a call or meeting with you. Then these five main allies uh, think about how to reach them and then write the message that you would send them to convince them to have a call. And it's probably not necessarily exactly the same message for all, but as we have 10 minutes, just select one of the five that you have in the main list and write that email or prepare that audio script. It is six and a half. You will have until 6.40 to prepare this. And I encourage you not to go because I promise, at least based on my experience from last year webinar, that this part is really useful for you because uh, can give you good chances uh, to not just think about partnerships, but start not just planning the networks, but start building them. Okay, we want to see as many of you that are uh, working on this uh, to use this opportunity to let this exercise guide you. I think we're already seeing engagement. Um, uh, and uh, sorry, obviously, obviously, some of you need also to or uh, take a coffee or go to the bathroom. We will have ten minutes in total, and we're gonna recap about the exercise together but take the time think about it and and enjoy it now i would do that um sonny has a question i have one fact check project on farmers slash hatters conflict resolution in nigeria and it was coordinated by dw academia the project was aimed to bring peace and understanding between the two parties and curtail the impact of climate change which is also a key factor in flooding the crisis we were eight media organizations involved during the project last year can this be regarded as networking alliance in simple terms? Did you get that question, Laura? I'm just trying to find it. What what the name of the of what did it show you? Uh, Sony Musa. Okay. So our people are working on those questions and um, we are, probably we'll come back to this question. I don't want to distract you. <laughs> yeah, I don't. No, no, I don't want to distract the participants when while they are doing the exercise. Then I, I take the the question and ah. at 40, we, we go back, okay? Absolutely. If you're working on these questions, uh, it would be great to know as many people that are working with us. Hope you understand the questions. So the first question is this, at least the five main allies you need to boost your main project today. The second question is, do you know how to reach them? While the third question is, write the message. The message could be email or audio. 
uh, that you would send them to convince them to have a call or meeting with you. I think this is meant to build up you start working on what you should work on and it's going to be really, really effective and um, good if we have these building blocks already. And hopefully it's something that you can pitch at the end of the series uh, for our grant supported project. Talking of grant supported project, we have one of our beneficiaries from last year, Patrick, uh, in attendance. Okay, Laura, please, can you explain the last question? Yeah, sure. The 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 last question is um you already identified that organization or that influencer or that artist that can be useful for your project. Um and you have someone that can introduce to that people or that organization. And you have that person or that organization, you, you have the chance to tell them about your project and about your idea to partner with. And then how that message looks, just write it, explain it, explain why, why your project is interested or can be interest for that person or that organization uh you are imagining um an incentive that can allow you both to to fundraise for money you imagine that uh, that this partner can be can give that um uh, influencer or actor the chance to have or increase their reputation uh do you imagine Think about how you, in a way, sell the idea of that partnership to that actor that is important for you to bolster your project. And this is basically based on this this um a statement that says that the first impression matters and if you have just one chance to convince that i don't know singer the most popular singer of the country that you were asking to produce a song with the most relevant disinformation of that election and you should probably have just one minute or less than one minute of his or her attention that's why to think about the message and to write the message in advance and using the time of this webinar to start thinking about that is important and useful laura take a look at uh, nima's submission in the chat box Nima, um, your your letter or your your message is correct. My recommendation should be that 
you will introduce yourself in a way that explains better why you can be a good partner to do that. Because you, you emphasize in your message that the, the other ones, like reporters or influencers or parliaments, need more skills about fact checking, why you are the one that can provide that. And then you need to do it probably in a way that can sound that 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 it's not selfish or not arrogant, but it's also enough uh, strong to that people or that organization to believe that you are useful for that partner. Okay, Laura, we have some that probably wants to share their own life. Uh, in Cindy C, you have the floor. Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, yes. Uh, just, just two things. I mean, uh, first about the, the exercise, do we share it uh, via the, what do you call it, comments uh, a session, or do we... Uh, which which session uh, section do we use to share it? Uh, is it via emails or? Uh, the second point is that I mean, it's just a question and just a uh, a comment as well. So I mean, if you approaching a, a network or potential network organization and you present a proposal and say, listen, this is what we are working on, uh, and we would like to collaborate. Uh, how can you ascertain that uh, your idea uh, will not be stolen? Uh, like they will reject your proposal knowing that very well that they will work with someone else or maybe they have uh, uh, an, an you, arrangement with someone else you, to work you with. Can, you you can't be you. sure. Thank you for your question. You never can be 100% sure. My philosophy is that uh, in this world, it's not just the ideas, what matters, it's also who's the better person to implement that ideas. And then if you are someone, or you or your media or your organization, someone in a position that you are probably the one that have all legitimacy, or background or whatever to do that, then it's not just the idea. They can stall them you the idea, but not your profile. And then being sure that you contact that actors that you are not, or they are not as trust actors at others after you are in this main position that I'm mentioning. I don't know if I'm enough mm -hmm. clear. Uh, yeah. On. Okay. So in the chat box, uh, let's look at Gitonga's uh, submission. Uh, what I, what do you think? I I would read it. We are we are already out of time. Then yes. If you didn't finish, but you want to share part of your work, you can do it. Okay, because it's already a six forty, and we're gonna do this wrap up with the exercise and then I want to answer some of your questions. Some of, I, I've been reading them during these minutes and there are some that are super, 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 uh, I think useful, not just for the person that posted, but also for others. Um, then you asked me, Paul, about- Yes, so how uh, do you want to proceed? Do you want, you, to, or... do you want to respond to some of this or should we- wrap up the presentation and we do everything all together. The, the presentation is almost finished. Then I I, okay. I can also, first I can answer some, uh, but you can select them based on what you find interest, not just myself selecting them. Okay, so uh, here is Gitonga and Jerry's submission. So five main alliances that can pitch idea. Center for Open Democracy, which was run the University Department of Journalism, Arts Journalism Network, World Federation of Journalists, Science Journalists, 
And um, so number two, how to reach them on email, via email. Number three, write email to Hall. Yes, a uh, person to introduce idea. My idea is about violence in maternity hospitals here in Kenya. There is a rise in maternal and child health. There is an issue. I will write this to a specific person. In open democracy, it focuses a lot on human rights. I think I can get a collaboration. So I think uh, this looks like a summary of what the key message of that email would look like and not really the actual email. Yeah, so, exactly. And, yes. Yeah, so, and, and in general, we as journalists have um not not difficult, but in general we sum summarize uh because we are used to in our practice. Um but the idea to ask you to write the message is just think about what the other organization or person need to know about you and about your project to consider that can probably be a good idea to listen to you. Okay. Um, and, and, and you also mentioned here, write messages to all, yes, and reach them by email. Uh, probably you already think about it, but... Uh, if they are important people, in general, they receive a lot of me emails from different people asking them different things. And then you should think about in your uh, message how to be different from all of the rest. And also, okay. it's always a good idea if you have someone that can introduce you. Because mm -hmm. if someone talked good about yourself is always a better or an open window or an open door that is useful for this type of first chance to have the conversation. Okay. Idrissa would like to do go live uh, with Tizan. Idrissa, you have the floor. Yes. Uh, thank you once again, Laura and Paul. I have worked on mine. I had wanted to share it on the chat, but it, it, it's not giving me access. But I've sent it in the question and answer segment. So quick one, with regards to the five main alliance. So let me just highlight what I will be looking. I'll be looking at fact-checking agency. I'll be also looking at media outlets, government agency, tech companies, and civil societies. Then how do I want to reach them? I will also want to reach them via networking events, collaborative projects, online outreach, professional associations, and direct outreach. So my email that I will send to convince them is, um, I was titled it, uh, the subject as collaboration opportunity, combating disinformation together. This is the message. Dear sir, madam, my name is Idrissa Jerikago. I am reaching out to explore potential collaboration opportunities in the country area of combating disinformation. In today's digital age, the spread of false information pose significant challenge to our society, undermining trust in media, institution, and democratic processes. As part of our commitment to addressing this pressing issue, I am seeking to form strategic alliance with your organization like, like us that share are dedicated to promote accuracy information and, and countering disinformation. So quick one we, of me not taking all the time. I will I will I would welcome the opportunity to discuss potential collaboration further and explore how our organization can work together to address the challenges of disinformation. Will you be available for a brief call or a meeting in the coming weeks to explore this possibility? Please let me know your availability and I will be happy to coordinate a convenient time for us to connect. Thank you for considering this proposal and I look forward to the possibility of working together to combat disinformation and safeguarding the integrity of information in our society. Best regards, Idrissa Jerry Kagu, fact checker, Global Multimedia Online TV. That's uh, my submission. <laughs> Laura. Okay. What, what do you think, Paul, about that submission? Um, for now, I think um, the letter sounds really nice, but the issue but, that... 
it's nice. The, 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 the letter sounds yeah, 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 yeah. so cool. Yeah, but the issue I only it's... have is I think the, when you mentioned the five potential targets, uh, looks more general, not specific. I think um he had a category, categories of uh, uh, potential partners. So I would just think instead of looking at the categories, why not have specific examples? Exactly. Oh. Okay. exactly. Okay. Okay. Oh. That, that's that's <laughs> the first feedback is you select the groups of actors. We are asking you just to pick the most relevant or important actor specifically to booster your project now. And that can change in the future, but today these are the top five organizations or uh, people that can contribute to me. The second feedback that I can give you is that if that is a mail, is a bit long. Try to be more concise if you can. And I'm not saying it's not nice or it's not clear. What I'm saying is just go straight forward. Because mm -hmm. if there's a chance or a possibility to lose the attention of the one that is reading you after the first paragraph. Then be, be ready to convince them from the first uh, moments that you have. Um, but yeah. th thank you for submitting. Um, I think or do have, you want to? We have yeah. lots of people on the, but I think what we can do is probably I would ask people to, I will share my email address, we'll curate it. And um, if um, if Laura can also give feedback. So, okay, yeah. this is the end of no, the slide. No, I can, I can do it. You have my contact uh, there. Yes. So. Um, I'm going to put in the chat also my, my email from my CFJ. And I ask you if there are this submission, send it to IFCFJ email. If there are any other comment or general comment or whatever, uh, you can also send it to Fachikado, but uh, it's gonna be easier for me to have all the tasks in the <laughs> IFCFJ email to, to have the chance to answer you all. Well, let's just and do I it don't... like this. If you want, uh, I just put my email address in the chat box if you want to share it with me so that I'll just okay. put everything together and pass them on to Laura. So yes, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. So we'll take questions and we have people raised hands already. So let's see how much we can do. We are in the last mile race, just a few minutes. So if I activate your mic, you go straight to your question and um, we'll move to the next person. Uh, Adolf Mohuza, you have the floor. Would you like to ask a question? Your hand is raised. Rajesh Wari, I've also allowed you to speak if you want to ask a question. I can can you hear me, please? Yes, Adolf, yes, please go straight to the point. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Um my question uh, actually um, is about, uh, you, you know, uh, most of us here in Africa, we have uh, a problem with politics. And uh, um, at a, a certain, at the same point, uh, people who are custodian of uh, information are the one who are not supposed to be checked, like uh, uh, government organizations. They are the same collaborators that provide um, that contribute to the uh, fake information, of course, and propaganda. Uh, I'm asking if you are collaborating with a government body or, 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 or institution, uh, how do you assess the information and how do you publish that? Okay, thank you. Access and publishing. Uh, Imran, you have the floor. Why are we for him, Ron? Raj, Rabbi Raj. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, thank you. And thank you, Laura, for the very informative session. Uh, and uh, um, I, I don't like to read everything, but uh, I have made my my main five allies that uh, where I can uh, propose my project. 
uh, but uh, as Paul already commented on someone else's uh, project that they need to be very, very specific. I will try by list to <laughs> make specific. I have uh, till now uh, listed five different allies, uh, including journalist, editor, media managers, media organization. Okay. And since since we are a kind of a new check organization, we keep an eyes on media organization itself. So I I, I will revise my my uh, proposal and I will email you so that you can comment on it. Thank you very much for very very very. No, uh, thank you, no. thank you. No. I will I will I will Paul if you want. Uh, I will pick a Gitonga um, question that he posted twice saying in age of AI, how we cope with collaboration? Yes, you can Or take... in age of AI, how do you collaborate? Do? And then um one of the one of the concerns everywhere is okay, what happened with AI and this information? And I'm my answer is um AI is obviously a challenge and can be problematic in many ways. We are already seeing in terms of images, videos that are cheaper now to just uh, create from zero and, and make you doing whatever they want you to, to present. But in another way, uh, AI can be incredibly useful for small newsrooms to have the chance to um, produce more content more quickly to translate that content uh, just with an editor, a human editor uh, supervision or uh, have the chance to develop tools that can allow us to better detect this information in languages that are not English, that have good tools to do that. And then what I'm saying is if I should select uh, possibilities is if you have the chance to put together different journalists or media organization working, working in the field of your country to start testing and experimenting with AI and helping one to the other on the lessons on what is useful or not from that tool, that can be a super quick but also efficient yep. way of collaborate. Because yeah. we are not having the chance every day to test all the new tools that they are appearing, then probably if you can, can create a kind of hub with a group of journalists or with a group of media uh, and, and be commit to share the lessons or the useful things and the ones that you can discard, that is one of the things that we probably can do. Also, if you have developers in your team, or you can partner with a technology organization or developer organization. You can also try to develop tools that can contribute to your media organizations in different ways. Moses. Yes, please. Um, uh, thank you for the chance. I am Jubi Moses. You hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I'm Jimmy Moses. I'm a, I'm a fact checker from South Sudan. Uh, I work for Two and One Check uh, Organization. Uh, I'm very privileged to have this uh, opportunity to attend this uh, webinar. I've learned a lot from the trainer and from Paul too. So, um, mine is uh, my work that uh, the assignment. I'll briefly go through it. Uh, the five partners that I would go for, one is IFCN, that's International Fact Checking Network, then Africa Check Network, uh, Code for Africa, and then uh, Latam Chequiado. I would do, I would go for Latam Chequiado just because, uh, so that we can uh, share notes uh, or learn from each other. So, because uh, uh, all these others are from Africa, and then our problems are almost the same, so we may we have a, we, we share a lot in common, but uh, North America, uh, South America and us, we may have uh, different circumstances that can help us uh, develop ourselves. That's the reason why I have to choose uh, that. So to my project, I will go. The person that I will contact is uh, 
is a Keleso. Keleso is a journalist in Botswana and um, I'm a fact checker in South Sudan. Botswana is having elections later this year. And then as you all know, uh, there's always a uh, election misinformation, mainly during that time, during campaigns, and then even after and during election itself. So um, my project would be a digital literacy, a digital media literacy. So I would want Keleso to be my focal point that her being a journalist, she, it will be very easy for her to mobilize her fellow journalists in the country uh, so that uh, we can do the training because in her country, there's no fact-checking organization and then they spread the misinformation at will and nobody is there to check, uh, uh, to check on it. So my email will be, um, uh, dear Keleso, as we discussed earlier about the elections and the misinformation in your country, I'm writing this email formally informing you and reminding you that I'll be the project that we discussed will be uh, taking place in October, and I would want you to mobilize. Uh, I would need your support in mobilizing your fellow journalists and government uh, officials that we can work with during the digital media. Thank you. I would be very happy to hear from you so soon. Yeah, uh, thank you for that. Okay. Maybe one of us. Thank you so much, Moses. I think we really, really? ran out of time. <laughs> so yeah. what we... I want you to do is uh, quickly respond to Moses. Apologies to everybody that could, we couldn't take. I think we went, this is right on at the top of the two hour. And um, so please and please send those um, pitches to me. Send those responses to me. We'll curate them together and pass them to Laura that will give the feedback. So really... Thank you, thank you for everything. So, what I wanted to do is a quick, good, quick uh, feedback for Moses, and probably what should be your last remark for the day. But everybody, don't go yet. There's some. There is one important information I have to pass across. Laura, um, can you repeat Moses' question oh. or? No, no, no. I, I don't know. Okay. No, Moses only did the pitch. So I'll push, I'll put everything to you. So the question is that uh, what do you think the major take home message for today should be? Uh the main the main message. Yes. Um uh, uh, probably I need to 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 be sure that I'm answering. Ah, I, I can read it here. Which accent you use to collaborate? Wait. No, I don't think we have time to go through the questions again. <laughs> uh, so I'm just saying, uh, let's give uh, an overview of today's session. What should be the take-home message for everybody? And uh, Yeah, then the, 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 uh, thank you, Mohamed. I'm going to work with Paul with your your... Uh, pitch and send you the feedback okay because i don't want to to mess or miss what you are uh, asking me um the general message uh, for all of you is uh, think about what you need that is outside your organization or your media that can be useful or have more impact with your project and try to in create environment with a network, with alliance, with a short or long partnership with that actor, that organization or that person to join you. Uh, probably lots of you are doing amazing things uh, and having more impact is part of what all the journalists around the world are looking. And then just Go for it. And thank you for being here during two hours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Laura. And um, the conversation doesn't have to end. So we have a very, very active Facebook forum. 
that uh, we are always actively engaging that you can directly chat me up and we can get real time information from me. So I, I'm putting the link here again. Uh, so please and please just click that link. It takes you to the Facebook forum I had me to and we can have that amazing conversation. And um, people are still asking for my email uh, for the um to start to send the pitches to so i just put the email up again um for the for the stuff that would like to pass on to laura for feedbacks so like it's obvious that is when we start having these conversations that we can better help you improve and um things can get much better so i want to thank laura for an amazing two hours <laughs> and um, i hope everybody rest and uh that we are, are going to be joining us uh on the next session so please and please immediately this webinar hands uh a survey will pop up on your screen i don't want you to leave your device so we would like to let we'd like to hear from you regarding your reactions your thoughts uh regarding this session we would like to have that feedback so that we can further improve and um and learn more from how we can best serve you. So thank you very much, Charlie, for to those that stayed throughout the two hour session. And um yeah, thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye from me. <laughs> Bye.